Hi everybody, Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection Central Digger Supply coming to you today uh, from apparently the land of the excavators uh, with a little bit of a situation here. So the unit we're going to be talking about today is one of these uh, AGT cab machines with the, with the AC on the side, which is really not noticeable um, at all. The issue in kind of the Achilles heel with all these machines is the power demands that that AC puts on the unit. Now I've covered in the past, the gasoline engines don't have a hope of uh, power in that AC unit. But the, uh, the diesel machines, they do come with alternators, or te it's magneto technically, um, and it is still not big enough to power the AC, but the good news is upgrading one of those machines, uh, one of these with the uh, little Kubota diesel, is significantly easier than the gasoline one because really all we're doing here is modifying a better alternator to fit on this machine it doesn't involve the the pump removal and the pulleys and all that stuff because this this already has a belt drive so what we're going to do we're going to talk briefly about the the situation we found ourselves in and uh, the best workaround for it and go ahead and get this machine able to run the ac at full blast uh, the whole time because you know that's what you buy this for is to be able to have that comfort of the cab and the air conditioning without the drama of the battery going dead and all that other stuff so let's get to it all right so the this, there's a couple of problems that we have uh when you're doing a project like this the first one is is just the size of the upgraded alternator so this is the original Kubota alternator uh or magneto um and it's pretty small, it's pretty compact because it doesn't have any of the voltage regulation equipment on it. The new alternators do, um, and it is represented by this unit right here. So this is one of those like Speedway Motors high output mini alternators. I think it costs like 130 bucks. I like using these because it's the smallest package with the highest output that I found uh, without going to a full size alternator. But as you can see, right? So this is, you know, you and, and the guy she told you not to worry about here. Um, there's a couple of different issues. The first one is the mounts themselves. So if I put these two together, you can see that there's a pretty big disparity between the distance of the two mounting bolts. Also, the location of the mounting bolts specific to the alternators is different. You can see these, they're kind of offset favored one way. And these are pretty much straight up. Uh, the other issue is the, the front and back of the mounting holes relative to the pulley. So I'm gonna try to line these up the best I can, but you can see that you know this pulley protrudes significantly more than this one does. And that's gonna pose some issues when you're trying to align the belt. So we have to deal with different mounting holes, different uh, offset of the pulleys, and the biggest issue by a long shot is the muffler, okay? And I'm going to explain why that's a pretty big issue here um, in a second. So let's get to that part. So I spent some time last night uh, addressing this, and I'm going to go over exactly what I did. So this alternator, or this original one here, it sits very nicely inside here, right? And it lines up with the pulleys. Everything's fine, obviously, because that's how it came from the factory. You're going to notice too that there's a there's a, a pretty good amount of clearance right here we don't have to worry about this interfering with the muffler in any capacity now the issue is when we go go to this one right here so clearly if i try to line up that's a chicken's probably dead if i try to line up this pulley it hits the muffler and it's in the way so what I had to do is I had to come up with a creative way to get the muffler out of my way while still retaining the ability uh, of the muffler to do its job because this isn't a turbo diesel. I don't want it to be loud. Uh, so the solution I was able to come up with, and I'm gonna just unthread a bolt here to see if I can kind of explain a little bit about what, what I'm doing. Of course, I got chicken screaming, I got Baby making noises and all sorts of problems. All sorts of problems here. There we go. All right. So what I was able to come up with was essentially this. Now, if you're going to tackle this type of project, I'm going to let you know right now, you 100% you need a welder. 
and I would uh, I would strongly recommend you have like a plasma cutter because doing this with a sawzall and uh, a grinding wheel was a pain in the ass. So we're going to talk briefly about this here a little bit, little kind of closer up so you can see what I did. All right, so I'm going to cut my face off here on purpose. So when you're doing this, right, all this, all this is here, this is just an inverted outer skin of the muffler. Uh, when you do this, there's a couple things you have to keep in mind. Number one is you cannot just cut straight across because when you invert it to the other side, it's not going to fit nicely inside this curve. So what you have to do is you have to basically cut like an ellipsis out. And when you invert it, it'll fit very nicely in here. There's also a baffle inside of here that runs the length of the muffler. You're going to have to chop that off. And the key is when you cut this indent in, you don't want to block your outlet. So it's very important to kind of find a happy median between how much clearance you need to make. And you're going to watch out for the mounting foot and you're going to watch out for the the actual uh, outlet pipe um, and then you have to be like me and just fill it all with weld because I am a grinder not a welder so once you get to this point though where it's it's reasonably sealed up uh, what it's going to do is it's going to allow the alternator to recess into here a little bit and then when you wrap the blanket back around here it should protect the alternator from that exposure to that uh, high heat coming from the the muffler here so what we're going to do for just a moment, we're going to leave this out. We're going to talk about how to align that alternator on the machine. Zoom in. All right. So there's a threaded boss right here that the alternator actually pivots off of. And to get the correct spacing, uh, because you cannot use the factory bolt, essentially what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take your alternator and you're going to have to just really ballpark guess how much space it's going to need. I'm going to say that's like a strong three quarters of an inch. And then what you're going to do, uh, what I recommend doing is stacking some washers. I like, as I drop the bolt, I like using some washers on either side of the bolt because it really allows you to kind of tailor the amount of space that you think you need. And again, I'm just, this is just like a trial, trial run here, just to see, just to see if my spacing's right. And then, so essentially, you just got to play around with, with getting, you know, the right size bolt, stack some washers, and get everything kind of lined up um, a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to get a shorter bolt. All right. So the next issue comes with the upper bracket. Now, this is flipped around, pay no attention. But do pay attention to that right there. So these Kubota engines are notorious. The screws that hold in, or the bolts that hold in this upper alternator bracket, the minute you loosen the long one down the bottom there, it'll start leaking uh, coolant out of the thermostat housing. Very annoying, uh, ad admittedly. It's extremely annoying. And the only thing that I found you can do about it is once you get the bolt loose enough so that you can take it out, you have to very quickly get some washers and put it back in and take up the slack. Other than that, you lose all your coolant, which nobody wants to do. Uh, just FYI, normally this upper bracket is sitting like this, okay? And the problem is because this alternator is taller, it no longer reaches. So we're going to have to do something about the fact that this bracket no longer will reach its bolt holes down there. So let's back that off. Let's do something about the leaking coolant. And put some, just throw some washers on there real quick and send that bolt back in. That way we don't lose the whole coolant system. We're going to talk about how to modify the, uh, how to modify the bracket to work for us. That should, that should seal it up tight enough. So what we got to do, we got to figure out a way to get that bracket to stay put. The best way that I can come up with to do that is all we're going to do is we're going we're to take this bracket and we are going to 
make the mount for it rise up higher just by a little bit. Let me see if I can get a better angle at that for you. Nope, I'll go down, down there. Okay, so alternator, original bolt holes will not fit, okay? Because of these cast portions on this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna raise it up by, oh, I don't know, let's say a couple inches, an inch, and that's gonna allow the factory bracket to be utilized with the new alternator. All right, so the next thing you need to do is you need to make yourself a little extension bracket here. Um, all I did was I just took some layout fluid and I just copied the bolt distance four times over. That's it, simple as that. Uh, this is just a piece of steel I had laying around, no big deal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place that uh, bracket up inside the two bolts that we're gonna take out from the thermostat housing. So let's go ahead and get to that part right now. Get these bolts run back in. So this is the uh, this is the overall picture. So you can see our little bracket that we made right here. Okay, that's just a couple of that's just a couple of carriage bolts right there that I just pressed through with the vise, and you can see how it spaces the alternator mount up a little bit. What that does is it allows the tensioner to get over the uh, casting right here. It allows us to use the factory alternator tensioner bolt. They came off our old one. And as you can see down here, we got our little spacer. That's just a piece of aluminum and some washers to take up the excess in the bolt. So admittedly, uh, th it, this is a, it's a frustrating project to do because this is the factory belt right here. So this belt is like just barely long enough. It's actually so tight that you have to take the alternator off, slip the pulley through the belt, pull on it, and then get the bottom bolt in. You can't like slip the bolt on and off. So, you know, you could get a longer belt. I didn't really want to do that because this belt's brand new. There's really nothing wrong with it. But this is what's required to upgrade your machine to a larger alternator capable of running the AC. So now what we gotta do, we're gonna put the muffler back on. We're gonna see if the clearance we made in here works. And then we're gonna talk about the wiring on the uh, charge stud and this connector here. So as you can see here, this is uh, the muffler in with our little clearance we made. Obviously there's, there's plenty of room. Actually, in hindsight, I went a little bit too deep on the cut. I could have got away with only going a little bit, but I figured I'd rather have extra room and uh, it's gonna give our wiring a chance to stay out of that heat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the muffler off. This is just kinda in here hand tight uh, for the purposes of the video. And then we're gonna go over the wiring. Okay, so I'm gonna talk you through the wiring here because it actually uh, ended up being very simple. So this, this is the starter, okay? And we got the main lug here. We got feeds from the battery. We got uh, a feed to the rest of the power of the machine. And then what I did is, because I had a bunch of this thick uh, wire laying around, so I made a, a big, giant cable that goes from the post, will run down around the bottom of the muffler and tie into the same post that the rest of the battery cables tie into. So that gets us, uh, that gets us taken care of as far as the output of the alternator. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and there's a lot of bad information, so... I want to get this kind of straight for you. Try to get my hand out of the shot here. Okay, this is the output of the alternator. So this would be outputting 12 volts-ish, 14 volts DC, feeding the battery and the AC and the rest of the machine. Now, this plug is an oddball one, okay? It's a round three-prong uh, plug, and I have not found a connector that fits this uh, correctly. But there's three prongs in there. Let me try to get my phone. There we go. All right. The ones we care about is this top one and the flat one. 
All right, the bottom one is used when you have like a charge light and you want a, a light to go out when it's actually charging. And then if it fails, the light would come on. We don't need that feature. But what we're going to do, normally this one would be a reference wire to tell the alternator what voltage it's putting out. This one is a switched positive that actually excites the alternator. Okay, but what we're going to do, because this post gets livened up when you turn the battery switch on, on this machine, because you're giving it a negative, I'm using the fact that this is switched on and off as my switch positive and my voltage reference. So it, even though it's a three wire alternator, we kind of turned it into a one wire alternator. Uh, and, and this is how we're going to do the setup on this machine. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to put the big muffler back on. I'm going to put the heat wrap around it, and then we're going to fire this sucker up and see if it works. All right, so here's the finished product. As you can see, the, the blanket and stuff like that fits nice around this uh, muffler. This came with it, right? Nothing changed on this side, and everything's enough clearance. So what we're going to do now, we're going to fire this thing up and see if we get proper voltage and uh, see if the AC right, stays. So on. I got the machine on here. We got 13.7 degrees, that's Celsius, inside the cab. It's not very loud out here, even though we had the muffler uh, delete. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's extremely, it's extremely present in the cab right now. Definitely not a, uh, not a bad place to work, so. I hope this video helps you out uh, if you have one of these machines or really any any cab unit with uh, 722 um, then you're going to need to put you know a bigger alternator on it so we got some stuff coming in the works here i got two more of these alternators for the gasoline powered units i um, want to be coming up with a kit to put these alternators on those because i would i would also like those acs to work especially because it's florida and we're coming into summer uh, and then i also got uh, i got, a, got an arc droid now because I refuse to learn how to use Fusion 360. Uh, so anyway, we got we got a lot of stuff coming. I hope this again. I hope this video helps you out. We're going to be reviewing that machine here shortly, and many uh, other models to come. For now, that's going to do it. Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection Central Digger Supply, reminding you to stay on those projects. Thanks.